Ralph, first of all, welcome to Manchester United. Uh, how does it feel to be in charge of this club now? Well, it's a, it's a mat massive challenge. It's one of the biggest clubs in the world. And uh, coming from Red Bull, now being responsible for the Red Devils, uh, the colours are the same. So uh, uh, it feels to be uh, at the right place at the right time. You're a, a lifelong student of the game. What does Manchester United mean to you? I mean, if we look back into the past, they have uh, won so many titles. They have uh, produced and developed so many top-class players. Uh, uh, last night uh, in my hotel room, I went through the list of all the most famous players of Manchester United. And I mean, <laughs> you, could, uh, you could play four or three, three or four different teams with all those players. Looking around you as well, here at Old Trafford, it's not a bad place to call home now, is it, for you? <laughs> No, I was here 10 years ago together with Schalke when we played in the semi-final of the uh, Champions League. And since then, I think I was here two or three times to watch Manchester United play when I was in charge of, uh, of Leipzig and, and Salzburg, especially when we played Champions League with uh, Leipzig. We also played against each other but uh, last season, but at that time I was head of global. But I also watched the game, so there always has been some sort of contact and relationship between myself, ourselves and Manchester United. You mentioned the game 10 years ago in the Champions League semi-final for, for Schalke. What are your memories uh, of, of those games and did you get a chance to speak to uh, Sir Alex? Yes, we spoke after the second leg here. He, he invited me into his office at Old Traf at, in the stadium. Uh, he enjoyed the glass of wine more than I did because we had no chance whatsoever in that game. However, we, we missed out four, four or five uh, important first 11 players at the time. And the mere fact that we qualified for the semi-finals with this team against Inter, we beat Inter away 2-5 and at home 2-1. Nobody had expected that at the time. So, uh, yeah, that was the first meeting, the first time I met Sir Alec. And then we met again in 2015 at an event of the Kika Sports magazine uh, for the Benzeman Award. Uh, we had dinner together and I'm very much looking forward to meeting him in the next couple of weeks. In your arrival statement, you said the squad is full of talent, it has great balance of youth and experience. So how excited are you to start actually working with this group of Manchester United players? Very excited. I mean, they have so many top talented young players. Uh, Jaden Sancho, I know from the German Bundesliga, uh, as a matter of fact, I met him when he was 17 in London. We were at the time trying to, to convince him to come to Leipzig. Uh, then he decided a couple of months later to go to Dortmund, which was not a wrong step from his perspective. And Mason Greenwood, uh, um, Marcus Rashford, there are so many top talented young players uh, in the squad. On top of that, the experienced top players uh, and uh, yeah, to work with those kind of players and help them to get better. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. Since your appointment, there's been so much talk around the media and fascination with your, your style of play and how you like your teams to approach the game. For an English football fan who, who might not be aware of it, how would you describe your football philosophy? I mean, in, in football, it's all about control. If you want to win games, you have to have control, uh, no matter if the other team has got the ball or if you're in possession of the ball yourself. And, uh, this is uh, probably one of the major targets in the next couple of weeks uh, to help the team to, to have control on the game and uh, at least against the top teams in the last couple of weeks. I saw the game against Liverpool, against Manchester City, um, at Chelsea, although we won a point there um, and even against teams like Watford, uh, the team didn't have control. They didn't, she, they didn't have control over the game and this is something we would try, we will try to, to achieve with the team and uh, of course this has got to do what what do we do when we have the ball ourselves and what are we going to do when the other team has got the ball and in those two areas I think it's important to develop the team in the next couple of weeks. On the other hand we won't have that much training time because we play every three days uh, so um, in fact it's about video footage, um, using video material as, a, as an important tool to develop the team, train the brains and at the same time encourage the players to do the right things and uh, I think it's important to win games in the first instance and uh, then step by step develop the team into the right direction. You mentioned it there, in England it's game after game after game rather than train, train, train. So how quickly can you get your message across do you think to, to players? 
I mean, of course, as I said, you have to do it step by step. And in the first instance, it's all about winning, winning games. Um, having control, and I think in order to get control, we need to be a little bit more proactive in both aspects of the game, with or without the ball. Uh, this will be one of the major targets again to, to, to play in a more proactive style. In the Premier League, you'll be taking on some familiar faces like, like Thomas Tuchel, who was sort of the weekend, um, Ralph Harsen, who from, from Leipzig. Does that, in a way, make the move to England a little bit more familiar for you? And will you be speaking to any of those guys about life in England? Well, I don't need to speak about, with them about life in England because I lived in England myself some 40 years ago and I've been here on and off, so I, I, I get along well in, in the country. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Jurgen Klopp uh, is also a German coach at Liverpool. I think we all are busy enough in our own jobs uh, and there is not that much time to speak uh, with other coaches. Uh, this has always been the case also in Germany. But of course, when we see each other, when we play against each other, this will only be, I think, in March or April, not in the next couple of, uh, of months. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing, to seeing those, those three, the three of them. What's your view of the Premier League? Did you think, did you always want to end up in England at some point in your coaching career? Yeah, but it's not a, it's not a point of wanting to be there. Um, having the background of the English culture and the English language, I've always been interested in in, in football. And uh, since that year in the in nineteen in the early nineteen eighties, I've been infected in a positive way by the way that football is being played, by the way of the atmosphere in the stadiums, I very much enjoyed that. And uh, in that year when I played myself at Southwick, I also um, had the experience of how much the players would encourage themselves on the pitch. So I became a different kind of player and later on a different kind of coach by encouraging players in training sessions and in the game. This is something that is not so usual uh, in Germany. Um, and that helped me a lot also to develop myself as a player at the time and as a coach. What would you say is your, your biggest accomplishment in, in, in the game, your greatest achievement? I think we, we won four or five uh, uh, promotions. Uh, the first one with my home club uh, at a very young age when I was a players coach in Bagnang. Uh, the second one with Ulm, uh, two promotions from the, sec from the third division to the first division. Uh, then in Hanover, we won promotion from the second to the first division. Um, after that, we were, I was in Hoffenheim, uh, a small village club, and we won two promotions within two years from the third to the first division. Um, and after that, I was at Schalke for the second time, the second spell at Schalke, um, when we played uh, uh, in the semifinals of the Champions League. Uh, in the first spell, we played in the cup final and we finished second in the Bundesliga. And uh, now the last nine years with Red Bull was an amazing time. Um, a club that was only founded in 2009 um, and winning three promotions in four years from level four to first division. And since then, the club has always qualified for European Cup competitions for four times for the Champions League and, and once for the uh, Europa League. It was an amazing time there. Uh, in the first three years, I was sporting director for Salzburg and Leipzig, and uh, after that, uh, only in Leipzig. Uh, twice, I was also the head coach at the same time. I mean, what happened there was really yeah, unique, amazing. Um, but um, I, I, it would be difficult for me to now to say what stands out out of those 20, 25 years. They've all be, they've all been great experiences for myself. You, you've inspired a lot of coaches, but who inspired you? Um, yes, there were, I would say, two or three people who inspired me. In the first instance, it was uh, a, a friend of mine, he, he's Helmut Groß. He inspired not only myself, but also quite a few other German coaches. He was uh, an amateur coach himself. Um, um, in normal business, he was uh, uh, an engineer building bridges, and uh, he was at the time probably the first um, coach in Germany who played with a back four, with the ball orientated uh, zone marking. And, uh, and I met him when I was 23, 24, and he had great influence on my development as a coach. And since then, we've worked together uh, at Red Bull in Hoffenheim. Um, 
Yes, and during my time as a, as a coach, uh, um, I was inspired by Arrigo Saki uh, at the time at Milan, I mean, in, in the 80s. Uh, they not only dominated European football, but uh, they also created a very sustainable, a very special, a very unique style of football that I liked a lot. And in my time, in my first time of uh, coaching in my hometown in Baknang, we played against Dynamo Kiev. Uh, I was on the pitch and I have told that story quite a few times. After 10 minutes, I had to count the players on the pitch uh, because it felt as if they had one or two players more than, than, than my team. Uh, and after the game, I spoke to Valery Lobanovsky with a translator and he told me that they train that every day, pressing uh, all over the pitch uh, all the time. So I went to see their training sessions and from then on I knew why they were playing like this and that it is possible to play like this if you very consequently work on this uh, on a daily basis in training. Obviously you, you, you're here as manager, interim manager till the end of the season, but then You've got a consultancy role, which is, I guess, going to guarantee your influence on the club for, for some time beyond that. So does that, that extended brief help your long-term planning with regards to what you'd like to achieve at the club? If I'm honest, I'm not thinking that far. For me now, the most important thing is to get to know the players with only two days, Friday and Saturday, to get to know the players, the staff members, to prepare them for the Crystal Palace game. And then it's about thinking from one game to the other, um, hopefully winning games, developing the team. And this is uh, what I'm interested in in the next couple of days, weeks and then months. Uh, I'm not looking too much ahead. I think it's, uh, it's, it's wise to put your focus on the next games. And as I said, we've, we've got so many games ahead in the next couple of weeks. Crystal Palace, Young Boys on Wednesday, Norwich away, Brighton at home. So uh, the calendar is packed and uh, there is not that much space in my head to think about what might happen in the next or in six months' time. There's only been one third of the season, so there's still lots to go. There's still a lot could happen between now and the end of the season, I guess. Finally, can you tell us, what is your message to Manchester United fans who are, who are watching this? As I said, I think everybody expects, especially the supporters, but also the players, the coaching staff, to perform in a successful way and to play in style. And to co combine those two things, I think this is the major target in the next days, weeks, months, to make sure that the, the fans can see what we want to play and that we do that, yeah, investing everything that we can to get better. This is for me, yeah, the major target in the next weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you.